What's up game devs? Dan here with You Contribute Games and in today's video we're going to take a look at how to move objects around in our game on a predetermined path. Hey game devs, what you're looking at right here is the wonderful world of path movement by You Contribute Games. And in this wonderful world, we have a cool little cube. Now this cube, he's a knucklehead. And like all knuckleheads, he keeps his curvy little circle close. Now that curvy little circle, she likes to just follow around circling her cube and just staying real close and following a little path, just circling around, making sure that no other curvy little numbers like this tall drink of water gets anywhere near her cube. Now that tall drink of water down there at the bottom, she just likes to sashay back and forth from point A to point B, slowing her sashay just ever so slightly at the ends. And all of this movement happens with only two scripts. One, to create and define the path that these curvy little numbers are following. And the second, to make them follow that path. And also, as you can see, this is going to happen in both 3D and 2D objects. So we can move things around a 3D environment or your cool 2D game. All right, we're back in the Unity development environment looking at our scene view. And as you can see here, we have our sphere or the circle we were looking at. We have our cube or square, and we have the capsule that was moving around within our game environment we were just looking at. But we also have a couple new objects we didn't see in the game view. We have our two paths, the looping path and the linear path. Now these are the two paths that we have set up for our sphere and capsule to follow along with. The cool thing about these two paths is that they're actually both using the same movement script in order to perform these two very different uh, path movements, right? So with our circle, we're able to use a path type of loop in order to loop around using these four points that we've set up. For the linear path, we're using a path type of linear in order to move back and forth between these two points. So you can see very easily how this is, is being utilized within the game environment to set up and can be changed. So we could easily say, okay, well, within our linear path, I actually, rather than this being moving back and forth between these two points, I want it to move along a three point path. Okay. So let's go ahead and let's duplicate the second point we had, and we're actually going to move that second point here to the new element we added, right, for our third point, and we're going to drag that third point up a little bit. And you can see that it's instantly going to start following along this new path, moving towards that third point. Now the really cool thing about this is not only is it going to work within a 2D environment like you're looking at here, but we can move into 3D space and we can drag this point back and we can even drag it up. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit so you can see that. And you can see how that object is now moving within a 3D space, not just that 2D space. So we can quickly start to visualize how this would work in a full game environment where we have terrain laid out and we're trying to set up enemies to move along a certain path. You can start to see how maybe this capsule is one moving enemy who's following a path, let's say in front of a building and then up a hill, and the other enemy is a circle enemy, and he's kind of just moving around uh, an object you know, within the game environment, just circling around that. And as your player has to decide where to engage each of these, do you know? Does that player go ahead and engage up front where maybe those two could link together, or do they wait until this capsule enemy has moved to this back point and attack there so that they can handle each one separately, or do they wait till it's up near this front point and maybe they just need to follow along this hill path to get somewhere over here without being detected? So you can start to see how these types of things can easily and quickly be plugged into different game environments. 
you know, um, we can easily switch that from a linear path to a looped path. And now our capsule enemy is moving up the hill, back down the hill. And let's say he's moving in front of a building or something, right? And within our 2D view, you know, this circle could easily be an enemy within a uh, 2D platformer where the player has to jump on this block and then jump off of that block while avoiding this enemy, right? So that's all ways that we can start to utilize this movement path. And we can easily, just by adding a couple points and adjusting the path type, really start to use that. Now, the other piece to this, though, in addition to that movement path script, is going to be the follow path, which is both on our sphere and our capsule. We're using that same script to follow along this path. Now, that script is going to allow us to do a couple things. We can choose what what type of movement we're using, whether we're going to lerp towards that or move towards that. Now, with using the move towards, you're going to use a steady speed moving from one point to the next, as you can see our capsule is doing now, and it never really slows down as it reaches each point, or that lerp or interpolation, linear interpolation, which is going to speed up and then slow down as it reaches the points, right? We can then set the path that we're following, whether we're following this linear path or the looping path or whatever path you've created for the, the object in your game. We can adjust the speed. So now let's, let's speed this capsule up and get him moving a little quicker. And then we can adjust the max distance. Now that max distance is really coming into play for our lerping movement style for, you know, as this the sphere is doing because with linear interpolation you never actually get to the point you're moving towards you just continuously get closer and closer and closer which is what adjusts that speed variable right so we can set the distance to say how close is close enough and you know depending on how you adjust that you can kind of start to get some some funky results or some some differing effects just by adjusting that right so let's go ahead and put that back at point one. All right, so there's only one more thing we need to learn on how to set up our movement path um, before we dive into how the scripting works, and that's how to actually create uh, these paths. So let's go ahead and do that real quick, and you'll see uh, just how easy it is. So we're going to uh, right-click, Create Empty, and I am going to rename this to New Path uh, just because that's simple, right? And then I'm going to right-click on New Path. We're going to Create Empty again. And I am going to rename that to P0. And then I'm going to duplicate. Actually, before we duplicate, let's go ahead and give these some, some icons. Uh, we'll do our point at a blue icon and uh, our path at an orange icon, just because that's what I like. And then we're going to duplicate this uh, point a couple times. And then I will rename this to P1. P2 and P3. All right, so we've got this created. And for those of you who aren't familiar with the keyboard shortcuts, um, that's what I was doing. I was just using the keyboard shortcuts. Uh, so I'm right clicking, going to create new, hitting F2 to open up the rename option, and then um, you know, Control D to duplicate. So that's all we were doing right there. So we've got these points and let's uh, let's go ahead and and drag these around and I like naming them as uh, you know P0, P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, etc. Um, because it allows me to keep them in order and understand you know the the sequence that they're in um, starting at P0 simply because we're storing them in an array it lets me easily know the array number also that they're the position for that point. So it just uh, keeps things simple. Keep it simple, silly. Um, but there's that. And now let's go ahead and add a component. We're going to add our movement path script. We are going to set our path sequence to four. And then we're going to drag all of these pretty little points 
these pretty little points we're going to drag them into place and as we drag these into place you see our lines start popping up over here right and let's make that a looping pass so we'll bam we'll get that last little point locked in and you know what maybe just maybe we'll uh let's let's rearrange these a little let's just get these situated and that is why these little icons are awesome you see how I'm able to click on that that's why we add the icons right all right so now that we've got our path set up and uh, just so you can see that that's how easy it was let's go over to excuse me let's go over to our sphere we're going to grab this new path right here we're gonna drag it into the my path for the sphere um, follow path script and then we're gonna hit play and you're gonna see that it automatically moved to that first point in the path that point zero p zero and it's automatically moving around that path. So let's speed that up let's get it going fast get it fast 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 there it is there it is there it is all right let's slow it back down um, but you'll see that <laughs> that that's automatically following the path and it's just that simple in our next video, we're going to take a look at the actual coding in these scripts and what's making it do that. Um, but what I'd like to see you go ahead and do is head on over to Ucontribute Games. Take a look where we have this documented out as well as you can go ahead and sign up for our newsletter, which is going to let you know when new awesome content such as these videos come out. But the best part about that is it's going to let you go ahead and download the actual project files that we're looking at here. You can you know, go ahead and open those up, play around in this scene with these objects and have a full copy of both scripts yourself. You know, we're going to give you an opportunity in the next couple of next video to to actually type this up as as and you know, you're following along, but if you'd like to just go ahead and get a copy of it, head on over to the site, sign up for the newsletter and get your own copy now. All right guys, see you in the next video. You're still here. It's over. Go home. Oh, you're waiting for something funny, right? What were you expecting? Sam Jackson with an eye patch and a saucy little leather number? I don't know. Go ahead and click uh, subscribe. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. Uh, click that Unity link right there. It's going to take you over to uh, the asset store uh, where you can pick up something from uh, You Contribute Games. Get you something nice. All right.